sorry. I reconvene the meeting of September 13th. We are on item 1.08, comments on any topic. We will accept public comments by raising your hand. Uh, you will be limited to three minutes. We'll put up a timer on the screen and once the three minutes ends, we'll uh, mute you. And we're limiting comments because it's already so late in the evening, we're gonna stop comments at nine o'clock tonight. Jessica Smith. Good evening. My name is Jessica Smith and I am a dedicated fifth grade teacher Great. at Schwanksville Elementary School and have been a proud Perkiom and Valley employee for the last 21 years. Our mission statement reads, we cultivate an inclusive community of learners empowered to grow intellectually, socially, and emotionally. And that we are wholeheartedly doing. We in the Perkiom and Valley are empowering our students to be true to themselves and to help them feel appreciated and accepted in their differences. And for that, I am so proud. I will say, however, that there has been little regard for cultivating a truly inclusive staff. Many of us, in light of several decisions that have been made since the initial COVID outbreak, do not feel empowered to voice our differences in opinions. There is very much a majority mentality running rampant among the district right now. And those of us who are in the minority are flat out being told to conform or there will be disciplinary action. Is this really what we should be modeling for our students? They are looking to us in these times and are watching to see how we handle adversity in life. And so I stand before you today, full of nerves, yet needing to be true to me and true to what I teach my students, to think for yourself and to be proud to stand up for your differences and your convictions. I am being told that in order to keep my job, which I love so much, I must receive the COVID vaccine or receive an up the nose swab, which is known to contain carcinogenic substances twice a week to assure you that I am healthy enough to be in the building and to be doing my job. Essentially, I am being told I have to choose my health or my career. CDC.gov states, new data began to emerge that the Delta variant was more infectious and was leading to increased transmissibility when compared with other variants, even in some vaccinated individuals. Given this information, I don't fully understand why only those who are unvaccinated would be tested twice a week. It is a fact that vaccinated individuals can still transmit the virus. If you truly need assurance, you would test the whole staff. Secondly, there are approximately 467 students coming through the doors of my building each day. 467 unvaccinated individuals who can potentially transmit the COVID virus. If you truly need assurance, you would test every student that comes through the door. I can't help but feel that we in the minority are being essentially punished for the choice that we have made. As every single person, vaccinated or not, young or young at heart, who walks through the door has the potential to spread the virus. I am not comfortable with being told that I need to conform or get out. That is not what the Perkiom and Valley School District stands for. And I challenge each person here today to think for themselves, to not feel bullied by the majority, and to truly be that role model that our kids expect us to be. Thank you. There are no other public comments at this time, so we're gonna move on in the agenda. We're on <coughs> section two, um, reports and presentations. I, I did see one of our student liaisons at least join virtually. Uh, if Mr. Seibel or Mr. Schaefer have anything additional to report, you can raise your hands and Mr. Ganesh will unmute you. I see Mr. Seibel has his hand raised. Hi, yes, uh, we don't have that much to report, but I just wanted to point out that our sports teams had an awesome week this past week uh, with a couple of highlights with our uh, field hockey team and our football team. We just really did a great job. Other than that, there's not much new information. School year is still starting off well. Thank you. Item 2.02 .02 is the president's report. 
Just a, a quick update. I'd like to recognize that Saturday was the 20th anniversary of September 11th. We remember those whose lives were lost and thank all of the first responders who, who put others before themselves. I also want to thank the high school staff and administration for a well put together meet the teacher night. I uh, had two students who I got to go through their classes and I, I enjoyed it and I got a lot of feedback from others about how easy it was to navigate and that people really enjoy this virtual format as opposed to navigating the hallways. So thank you to the high school. And with that, I'll move on to item 2.03 and the superintendent's report. Dr. Russell, do you have an update tonight? I do not, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 2.04, the solicitor's report. Mr. Subers, do you have any report? I have no update either. Thank you. Item 2.05, board and district committee reports. Um, please check out the listings. We have a number of committee meetings coming up in the next two weeks. Moving on to item three, approval of the consent agenda. I'm looking for a uh, motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. I have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll move on to section four on education and I'll turn it over to Dr. Polar. Thank you, Mrs. Evans Brockett. Item 4.01 is the education update part two. And I will turn that over to Mrs. Lori Smith. Thank you and good evening, everybody. Thank you and good evening, everybody. This evening, we are going to just have a very brief presentation, um, a follow-up on technology. Mr. Ganesh is going to tag team with me and then very briefly about our assessments. I can start to provide some background while Dr. Russell looks for the, the slides. Um, in terms of our technology, last week, Mr. Ganesh and I presented to the board the um, request to purchase interactive panels for our middle school classrooms, as well as to purchase some wireless projectors to um, supply those projectors to classrooms across the district that may have aging um, projectors. And we received some very positive feedback from our board and did some thinking over the past week and really reassessed um, where it would be the most value for our devices and for our classrooms and really improve teaching and learning. And so this evening we are presenting to you a slight change to our recommendation. Um, and we're gonna start on the next slide. Mr. Ganesh is going to speak to you about the differences between a wireless projector and an interactive panel. Let me get through this. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, as a follow-up to our conversations last week, you know, here's a cost comparison of the interactive panels versus the wireless projectors over its lifespan. Uh, please keep in mind that the interactive panels we are proposing comes with its own onboard computer, which is around $700. So in the long run, the interactive panels are a little bit more expensive than the projectors, but they also provide more, uh, much more capabilities and last longer. The panels are, are not just a projection device, but it also lets a staff and student interact with the content and increases the student engagement greatly. Plus with the projectors, uh, there are some additional hidden costs such as, you know, um, we've, got pro we've got to provide a projection surface that could be a whiteboard. And also during the initial installation period, we've got to run some wires to make those wireless projectors wireless. So we've got to have, a, have some network connectivity. So considering all those items, um, and since we have been piloting this technology over the last two to three years, uh, it's our recommendation that moving forward, if feasible, we'd like to replace the projectors with the interactive panels. So Smith. So uh, again, slight change to the recommendation from last week. Um, we are actually asking to purchase 110 interactive panels at a cost not to exceed $405,000. You will notice that the attached quotes in the board agenda um, reflect 105. That was based upon our recommendation last week. We will adjust those, and that's why we have asked for the not to exceed amount um, in the approval this evening. These 
panels would be purchased for all of our middle school core classrooms, special education and elective areas. We also took um, some of the feedback from the board and are in addition adding so that each elementary school as well as the high school receives one of these panels that they can choose where might be the best location for that to be so students across the district are exposed to this. And we will use the projectors that we will secure out of the middle school when we put the panels up to projace, pro, uh, sorry, replace the other um, projectors across the district that still need replacement. Um, so we will repurpose those projectors upon installation. And of course, we need to maintain our projector inventory. We still have quite a few of them across the district. Our goal would be to replace them with panels as they become outdated or need replacement if our funds can continue to support that. So you'll notice um, the wireless projector action item was removed from the agenda and the interactive panels item was added. I'm gonna pause for just a moment. I'll defer to you, Mrs. evans Brockett, if there are any questions from the board on these on this particular item before I move into assessments. Thank you. And I do see Mrs. Lofton has her hand raised. Um, so my question about this is where are the funds coming from? Is it coming from the unassigned fund balance or is it coming from the technology budget, budget or ESSER funds or what, what mix of funding is going to support this? Thank you, Mrs. Lofton. I did forget that piece. This would be funded completely through ESSER funds. Between ESSER 2 and ESSER 3, we have the sufficient funds to be able to cover that. Remember, we had a savings in ESSER 2 from our summer programming. Are there any other board questions regarding the projectors? Mr. Dorr. So the 45 projectors that were on, we talked about last week, that's being, they're gonna be backfilled with the ones coming from East and West. We won't need to buy any. That is correct. Um, and we also learned that the timing of whether we ordered projectors or panels, we really were looking at about an eight week delivery and installation. So we'd initially thought we could get the projectors maybe a little bit quicker, given that they would both install around the same time. Yes, we will take those out of the middle school and repurpose them to the 45 that we had anticipated. This is Mayors. Do you, do you have a ballpark figure for how many interactive panels you would be looking for for the elementary school and the high school as we move forward? Yes, we do, Mrs. Mayors. Um, you know, if you think about across our district, we've got about 400 slightly more than that classrooms across the district. So if we choose to implement after this um, initial phase at the elementary or at the high school, it would be again, a large purchase similar to this. Um, given that we, you know, our ESSER funds are allocated for other things, we would need to come up with a different funding stream. And so that will probably be a slower implementation as we, those projectors become aging and need to be replaced. It would be slower to replace them with an interactive panel, um, you know, unless of course we look at leasing or some other options that we may have, but we hope to learn from the middle school implementation and then learn, you know, how well that goes, any challenges that we may have to make a better prediction um, and recommendation for future. I'm not seeing any other questions. Can, we have more for us, right? Yes, okay, so moving on to assessments. Last week, I did present the preliminary PSSA results. Again, those are preliminary. Some schools across um, the state are still testing. They had through the end of September. Um, so we are initially just looking at them. We do present them every year to you as soon as we receive them, just so that you have an idea, but we will do a much more deeper dive into the assessments and what they mean for us. And we will present that at our January annual data presentation. We're also analyzing the contributing factors to the results of the scores this year, you know, thinking about the instructional modes that we delivered, thinking about the number of exemptions that we had this past year was much higher than any previous year. So we're doing a lot of analyzing of that right now. In fact, this week we have an administrative professional development where we'll really be looking at um, those data and developing action plans so that we can bring to you much more specialized um, and specific action plans. We hope to compare across how do, you know, schools across the state do that data Data is not available yet. And we've really heard from the Pennsylvania Department of Education that we should, they are highly encouraging and suggesting that we look at PVOS data and put more weight on that than possibly on an individual PSSA from last year. Remember PVOS is that value added system that is based upon students growth and they project how you anticipate a student will score on future tests. So they're kind of directing us to really be looking at some of that data as well. 
We are developing action plans. We're looking at our curriculum and what is the impact to our curriculum as well as what interventions may be needed for individual students. So a lot more to come. We're hoping in our monthly education committee meetings to be sharing information as well as again, that larger January piece. But I did wanna, I didn't speak really about what we were doing with the data last week and wanted to make sure that you knew we were doing that. Mrs. Smith, I just want to say in terms of assessments, our teachers continued using maps, stibbles, all of that throughout the last year. So we'll have a lot of data available to us at the January meeting, correct? Yes, we absolutely did continue other assessments last year. We adjusted the assessment schedule slightly because of the pandemic and the different models of learning, but we do have many pieces of data to show you in January. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions by board members? Thank you for that update. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Moving on, item 4.02, the enrollment report was presented on September 8th. Item 4.03, 04, and 05 are all on consent. Item 4.06 is a motion to approve Dr. Jenna Rufo as a consultant for professional development of the administrative team and I so move. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Item 4.07 is on consent. Item 4.08 is a motion to approve the 2021-2022 Athletic Health and Safety Plan version six as presented and I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? And I just want to clarify because there seemed to be some confusion last week uh, when we, when Dr. Kohler brought up masks in the pool. We, we weren't asking for students to have to wear masks in the pool. It was to, for the safety plan to specifically call out that they are not required in the pool. Um, we just want to make sure that that, that was specifically in there. Um, yeah, and I'll just add, I wanted to point out that Volleyball was not the only indoor fall sport. I wanted to make sure that correction was made. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. No further questions. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 4.09 is a motion to approve a resolution for the implementation of COVID-19 assurance testing through Project ACIT for the purpose of reducing the risk of in-school COVID-19 transmission. And I so move. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion for. That concludes section four. Thank you, Dr. Kolar. That moves us on to section five and business. Mr. Doerr, please. Thanks, Mrs. Evans Brockett. 5.01 was done last week. There's no report 5.02, are on consent. 510 was removed from consent. 5.11, it's a motion to approve contracted nursing services for the purpose of administering ACIT COVID-19 assurance testing pending final review by solicitor and administration. And I so move. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 5.12, it's a motion to approve a settlement agreement and release number 238575 in lieu of FAPE as recommended by the solicitor. And I so move. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 5.13, it's a motion to approve the purchase of 110 clear touch interactive panels for classrooms at a cost not to exceed $405,000 funded by ESSERS. And I so move. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And that ends my section. Thank you, Mr. Doerr. Move on to section six, payment of bills. Dr. Weston, please. Thank you, Mrs. Evans Brockett. Item 6.01, the ratification of bills and payroll and the authorization of payments. The recommended action on this item is a motion to ratify the payment of bills and payroll as per the list submitted for the period ending August 31st, 2021. 
and to authorize the payment of bills on the check and voucher registers submitted for September. And I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 6.02, the approval of the treasurer's report and financial statements. The recommended action on this item is a motion to approve the treasurer's report and financial statements, including summary of cash and investment accounts as prepared by the administration for the period ending August 31st, 2021. And I so move. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. And that concludes section six. Thank you, Dr. Weston. Moving on to section seven and professional personnel, Ms. White, please. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. White, we, they, we removed them from consent because we added contracts there, so we do need to vote on them tonight. That's okay. I apologize. Yeah, do you want me to restart the section? Okay, I apologize for that. Okay, 7.01, two, three, four, five, six, seven are all on consent. 7.08 is a um, approval of memorandum of understanding. Motion is to approve a memo of understanding for the Perkiom and Valley Education Association, PBEA, to adjust the co-curricular salary schedule as presented in ISO move. Second. Oh, sorry. 7.9. I'm so sorry. We have a motion and a second on 7.08. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 7.09 is on consent. 7.10 is a motion to approve the election of the district superintendent in accordance with 24 PS section 10-1071, 1073 and 10-1075 and motion to enter into a contract to establish salary and fringe benefit for the position of district superintendent. And I so move. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries and I congratulate Dr. Russell on the renewal of your contract. Thank you very much to the board and I appreciate the opportunity to continue to lead and serve and do more good things for our students, so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Russell. 7.11 is the uh, motion to approve the election of assistant district superintendent in accordance with 24 PS section 10-1071, 10-1073, 10-1075, and a motion to enter into a contract to establish salary and fringe benefit for the position of assistant district superintendent, and I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries and we welcome Mrs. Smith to her new role as Assistant Duke District Superintendent. We're very excited for you to start in that.
Thank you. I, I would also just like to say thank you very much for this opportunity and for your confidence in me and Dr. Russell for your support across the years and your guidance. I can't tell you how excited I am to be moving into the role. My husband was here, the kids are watching. Um, so again, thank you very much. I look forward to supporting the district in this role. Congratulations, Mrs. Smith. And uh, 7.12 is on consent and that ends my section. Thank you, Ms. White. Moving on to section eight. Thank you, Mrs. Evans Brackett, uh, 8.01. I'm sorry, Mrs. Roberts, we have somebody speaker on, okay. <laughs> now, now I will turn it over to you, Mrs. Are Roberts. We, are we okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, 8.01, 8.02, 8.03, 8.04, and 8.05 are all on consent. And that concludes section eight. That was fabulous, thank you. <laughs> Moving on to section nine, governance, Mrs. Mayers. Thank you, Mrs. Evans Brockett. 9.01 is on consent. 9.02, approval of recommendations for 2022 PSBA officers. The recommended action is to choose and endorse candidates for PSBA officers for 2022. Um, I believe we, well, first, I believe Mrs. Evans Brockett said that when is this due that we need to? So I did check and vote. We have until October 16th to submit our votes. So unless someone has really spent some time researching this and has a, a motion tonight, we can hold it for next month. Mr. Dorr. So I did a little bit of research and just based on how long they've been on the board, how long they've been doing what they're doing. Uh, I was going to recommend David Slap at Brentwood. Um, I thought Miss Backer was great, but she's from a very rural school in upstate uh, Western Pennsylvania, whereas David Schapp is from a very urban school, large school district. And then kind of the same, um, candidate one, candidate two, and candidate four. Um, I liked what they had to say, the different areas. I thought, they, I thought all those choices sort of represented the best of you know, the options. Thank you, Mr. Dorr. Did anyone else have time to look? Would you like, um, Dr. Pola? Um, so I looked at them as well, and I actually had the opposite recommendation for president. I liked Sabrina Becker. Um, so I was going to recommend we choose her. As far as the four candidates for the steering committee, I couldn't really tease out who I thought should be the three. So I didn't have a specific recommendation for that, but I just wanted to point out, I came to the opposite conclusion for president. Okay, so if everyone is okay, I'm gonna recommend that we hold this for next month to give all board members a chance to look at it. We never made a motion. There was no, there was no motion. No. And that ends my section. Thank you, Mrs. Mayers. That takes us to section 10 and closing items. 10.01 uh, is comments from the audience. Again, if you have a comment, you can raise your hand and you will be called on virtually. You have three minutes. Dr. Russell will put up the timer on the screen. And when your three minutes is up, you will be muted. So Jason Eric Saylor. Hi, this is J Jason Saylor, uh, Skip Back Township. Uh, first, I want to um, appreciate uh, the words of Miss Brown and Miss Smith. I know it has to be extremely hard to put yourself in an uncom uncomfortable situation. The community appreciates your comments. It's hard uh, in, in this day and age uh, where people are getting boxed and people are getting in trouble for speaking out. So I know many members of this community appreciate the time that you gave today for that. Uh, secondarily, again, we were uh, warned with the opportunity of public comment to be shortened, which goes against the policy items. And I just don't think it is a good um, policy to limit public discussion. It doesn't matter how late it goes. When there are issues that are important to the community, public discussion should never be limited or attempted to be limited. It's only 8.59 at night. Um, the, the actual board meeting went through in 23 minutes. Um, so that's not a long time. I was disheartened that there were no comments from any of the board members on Project Eats It. Um, specifically, uh, this is a large scale uh, new phase that the school board would be voting in to allow happen to teachers, staff, 
and students, specifically where there are parts of Project ACIT that says that although a health professional must be on um, premises during the testing, a health professional does not necessarily need to give the testing. These are really complex issues of the day that often get skipped by through the board meetings. As we continue to talk about light bulbs and projectors, we don't talk about testing our students, testing our teachers, and testing our staff. Uh, lastly, uh, we, we learned, or I learned, we should never judge a book by its cover, but when the cover of the book uh, is nice white parents and a subject matter in the book is, is it possible to limit the power of white parents, members of the community find that to be solely dis disheartening. And when um, the PSEA is putting out podcasts like that, it makes members of the community think twice about what's really happening in the statewide unions. Lastly, uh, we've been told numerous times to look at the policy documents on the website. Um, and when those policy documents aren't followed to the T, uh, it becomes very confusing for members of the community. So you know, although the board dictates that members of the community read policy items, when those policy items are changed or uh, not followed as they are written, uh, then it makes things confusing. So as we more and more want community involvement in these meetings, whether they're work sessions or not, that would be helpful. And lastly, a member of the community today spoke, and I spoke at the work session uh, about the grades situation. And I'll, although we will wait until January, again, it's disheartening now you've had two members of the community bring this up when we're being told we'll, we'll, we'll get into it in January. So any lessons that we might learn in September, October, November, December might potentially hurt our kids in 2021, 2022 school year. Thank you very much. Dr. Tammy Campley. Hi, Tammy Campley. I'm with uh, Perkiom and Township. I want to first start off with um, congratulating Dr. Russell and Mrs. Smith on their um, renewal of their contracts and, and being able to continue to help support our school district. I had actually uh, debated speaking this evening because um, this has been something on my mind for a few weeks, but then with everything that happened, I wasn't quite sure whether or not I wanted to speak up. And then at the same time, I know that if I don't, we have another whole month before I can kind of get my thoughts and feelings out there. And so I do want to speak to um, policy 9.03, uh, looking at public comment. I listened to two speakers um, that brought it up a few, a few meetings ago. I listened to Ms. White and Ms. Roberts who explained the intent of the policy and I don't think there's any malicious intent at all. I really do think the spirit of it is appropriate. Um, however, listening to Ms. Lofton and those two community members, I was then thinking about how it could really limit being able to get comments from the community. And there are always a few that are not appropriate and they push the limits and they push push the envelope as far as what can be said and what, when do we stop them? I mean, last week, Ms. Roberts was put, her name was put out there twice in an inappropriate manner. There was also someone videotaping this evening and there was somebody taking pictures last week and texting them throughout the meeting. I'm wondering if maybe instead of putting a limit on the majority of the community members who we really should hear from, we all have different perspectives and we really do need to learn from one another. Maybe there needs to be some civility clause or something that can be put in place to ensure that those speaking are following the rules. They're doing what is being asked of them. They're being role models. They're not bringing bullying tactics to the table. And if they don't comply, then we do what we did tonight and you shut it down. I just, I don't know that the policy recommendations are what we need to bring this community together. I think there's many in this community who have a lot to say and they have great perspectives, even with the mass debate, whatever side you're on, I learned from both sides, even though in the end, I still believe that we were doing as a district and a community, what was best for students by following the CDC recommendations, especially for the youth that cannot be vaccinated who are under 12. I did learn and I did hear things that gave me pause. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if we didn't have an open forum like we do right now. So please take that into consideration in the coming weeks as you 
continue to work on this policy. And I look forward to seeing what the board ends up deciding. Thank you for your time. Mr. Christy. Hi, this is Chris Termina. I live in Perkyoma Township. Um, I have two boys at the high school. Um, I just want to comment that the last speaker was so eloquent in describing exactly how I feel about limitations on speaking from audience members. Uh, it is a fundamental um, privilege that we have to be able to participate actively as community members in our local government's organized discussions. To limit those um, seems to be uh, antithetical to our ability to put forward ideas and share them. Um, I 100% agree with the last speaker that a civility clause would do everyone in this community a lot of good, regardless of the side of the fence that you, you stand on. Um, but limiting the number of speakers or the time that they speak, um, uh, aside from that, uh, does not seem to be productive. As a matter of fact, it's going to likely cause additional animosity amongst the community members. Uh, so I am in favor of the last speaker's um, proposition to uh, create a civility clause and to immediately shut down inappropriate comments um, as they come forward, but not as a rule limit the time or the number of speakers that we have uh, participating. In a time like this, we want to encourage participation, not limit it. Thank you. Mr. William Einhorn. Good evening, William Einhorn, Perkyoman Township. I firstly would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Russell on the renewal of her contract. I would like the public to know that this, the last 18 months have been hard on everybody, and but I can't imagine the, the, um, the stress and the strain that the leadership of our school districts have been under and and I believe firmly that Dr. Russell has handled it with elegance, grace and class and she's only doing what she feels as well as the board feel is for the in the best interest of our students. Um, I, I'd like to echo what some of the uh, what the, the last two speakers have said. I have to uh, thank Ms. Campley for her eloquence. I don't think I could have said it any better herself. Um, we have seen in the public in the last few weeks and other meetings in local areas descend into chaos to the point where some meetings have had to shut down and go and switch dates and go to a virtual platform because people could not be civil. And I find this very disturbing. And certainly I also agree that everybody has a right to their opinion on the issues that we are facing today. So I do ask that yes, a civility clause do be considered because I think it's important. People need to remember that board members are in volunteer positions. They are not paid for these positions. And many of the items that some people may or may not complain about getting discussed do get discussed in things such as executive sessions, which, which unfortunately by law we are not privileged to know about. And I think that's important for people to understand as well, but I do agree a civility clause needs to be put in place. We should not be attacking each other at this point over our differences of opinion. I know that's easy to say because of the many hotly contested items that have been gone on, especially in the last 18 months. Um, I, th I think it's just important that we maintain civility. And then the last thing I will say is this, and this is you know, a, a personal thing for me. I hope that when all of this situation calms down when we return to normalcy because I do believe it will happen at some point and I'm very hopeful that it is sooner than later but that when we return to um, what we would consider to be normal school issues that people will come out to meetings and be just as passionate about things such as fair funding lower class sizes arts programs and all the things that make schools wonderful and i really do hope that the public will continue to be just as passionate about those issues because those issues are going to crop up in the near future at once again thank you very much for your time Mr. 
all the public comment, Ms. Zilin's brother. Thank you, Mr. Ganesh. I'm not seeing any further public comment at this time. So with that, we'll move on to item 10.02, comments from board members. Are there any board members who'd like to make a comment? Ms. Lofton. I just also want to really personally express my gratitude to the leadership that we have from Dr. Russell and from Mrs. Lori Smith. Um, this district is in really good shape because of their fantastic leadership. And I am just delighted and excited for the future to continue to have these two really fantastic individuals at the helm of our ship. So congratulations, delighted to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Lofton. And usually I make a disclaimer that whatever the board says is not representative of everyone, but I think tonight we can say that that is representative of the board as a whole. Are there any other board members who'd like to make a comment? Seeing none, that takes us on to item 10.03, the notice of video recording disclaimer. Um, per policy 006.3, all video recordings are subject to the following disclaimer. The opinions expressed by any members of the public do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of School Directors of Perkiomo Valley School District and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of School Directors of Perkiomo Valley School District hereby expressly disclaims any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public. Any unauthorized rebroadcasting of any video, audio, and or still image of this meeting is strictly forbidden without the written permission of the board of the school directors of the Perkiomo Valley School District. And prior to adjourning, I will just remind you again that there are numerous committee meetings in the next two weeks, which is where much of this discussion happens. So I encourage you to join those. And with that, we adjourn for tonight.